Welcome back, folks. My name is Timmy, and you're watching Rudy. To another episode of Rudy Discusses. The reserve list, the thumbs down broken button, and another buyout from an evil underground investor. That says, Rudy, I'm going all in on something new. So I'm going to sell you my entire position of my ultimate speculative investment. A brick of Carnivals of Souls. So first, let's talk about the card. Just, let's just kind of give it. Carnival of Souls. Or is this Destiny 1998 or 9? 1999. Reserve list. Two drop and shaman. Very cool artwork, though. Gotta admit. Very cool artwork. Two drop and shaman. Whenever a creature comes into play, you lose a life. And you generate a nice little piece of black skull evil-looking mana. To the old pool de la mana. That's it. That's it. That's it. So... Where do I start? So essentially this guy's been buying out this card for a very long time. He wanted to cash it in. Obviously, like I tell everyone who does buyouts and things like this, one of the biggest things you're going to run into is if you just try to buy list them or sell them to a large company or anything like that, is they all have circuit breakers and caps in place. So if you ever want to sell out your position of a buyout or a speculative thing or anything like that, you're going to learn very, very quickly that most stores will only buy 4, 8, maybe 12, maybe even 20 or 16 but when you're talking hundreds of the same copy of a card, you run into a whole new set of circumstances. And uh, that's where Creepy Rudy of the uh, Tetherball Third Dynasty of Taco Packs comes into play. I like to have positions in very strange things. And I like to waste money on cardboard because you only live once, right? And nothing worse than FOMO, am I right? Or FUD? Yeah. Current market price of the card, I would say, is probably around 10 bucks, Based on actual sold listings. Sure, you can probably get 20 or 30 for a gem minty one, or maybe get it graded, or maybe something like that in a local store. Somebody really wants it, blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, this is not a very liquid card. It's not a card I would really recommend people pumping and speculating in. Um, but it does have potential. I'm sure this guy probably bought this in the past five years or something and probably paid less than a dollar a card. So he probably, you know, 5x or 10x his money with me, which is fine. I'm happy for him. Um, this is one of those weird uh, lower tier reserveless speculative cards that a lot of channels and maybe smaller YouTubers and different uh, groups and private little Facebook message board, Discord, Tinder, and, you know, uh, back page Silk Road groups always focus on. Um, I'm not still a huge fan. Personally, I'll be very blunt. I'm not the biggest fan uh, of the card itself. I'm, I'm really not. The card itself doesn't, you know... I really don't see a lot of utility. I don't see a lot of excitement with the card itself, okay? I like to build positions because I can't predict the future. One of the biggest things that we all learned when I did that uh, collection buyout, I think it was a three years ago? Was it three, four years ago? With the infamous antiquities, the Silex, 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 Golgarian, Silex, Silex? I can't remember the card. And I bought hundreds of the copies. I don't know what it was. Two, three, four hundred copies for like four dollars a card. And now the card's like $50 to $100 a card. So obviously examples like that are, you know, unpredictable. And sometimes you hit lightning in a bottle. No, I did not predict that was going to happen. No, I didn't buy into it expecting to, you know, 10, 20x my money. But sometimes in any form of collectibles, you just stumble and hit lightning in a bottle. Um, but you can't use those examples as justification for buying and putting all your money in Carnival Souls. You can't, you know, you can't turn around and... and and use that as an example for this. Because this is not the same thing as an Antiquities Reserve List card. This is something that's Urza's. Obviously, Urza's boxes are very expensive. No, there's not a lot of utility. People really aren't building a ton of decks around Carnival of Souls. I mean, you can. I'm sure there's things you can do in the world. And you can do... You can probably build something that has some sort of combo. Where you're popping a lot of creatures into play. Maybe you're bouncing creatures back to your hand. Maybe you have some sort of flicker. Maybe some sort of phasing. Something that's generating some sort of, you know... Ability to have three, four, five, ten creatures pop in and out of play, or maybe you have a card where instead of a card losing one life, you gain one life, it reverses the damage. Maybe you have something, you know, I, I don't know. There, are, I'm sure there's weird combos and things that you can come up with and do, but overall, you know, I like these type of positions and plays because I like it as a diversification play. I don't like this as a card that I expect to make a ton of money on. This is something that I set it and forget it, and I'll readdress this and I'll, I'll check the inventory in the Rudy Volt and. You know, once a year, once a quarter, maybe in a couple years from now. And we'll see what this card is doing in five years, just for funsies. But 
That's my opinion. So my justification again is I don't have a big position in the car. Now I do, similar to many other cards. And for the low price point and it's reserve list, it's kind of a, you know, kind of a definitely bottom of the barrel, kind of third tier reserve list. I really wouldn't call it like, you know, junk bond territory of like Fallen Empire's reserve list or Homeland's Narwhal's reserve list, but it's it's like one tick above that. It's it's not too far off, man. Carnivals, you know, that's the thing, you know. Reserveless conversations are so polarizing, it's really difficult to really just talk about it straightforward. And when you can talk about it straightforward, you'll learn that, well, you know, most of reserveless cards, I would say probably over 50% of the reserve list is a bunch of useless junk cards. But that's not really the purpose of it. They're reserveless, even if they're junk, because it's the principle. It's the credibility that it was needed in the mid-90s because of the crisis of confidence. That is the actual core component in why the reserve list existed back then and was created and why it exists today. It has nothing to do with an intentional thing, the wizards to create a secondary market to make people millionaires. It has nothing to do with, you know, all these weird conspiracy theories. The reserve list was created out of a necessity from a moment where they screwed up bad by reprinting Legends cards and Chronicles. And it, it literally was, it drove stores and players. It made people, it was the biggest exodus in problem of ever of magic in the history of the game and they solved it and i can tell you for a fact most companies in most extreme situations like that most companies would not have made it past that event okay most companies who experience a very black swan once in a generation event which the reserve list mid 90s crash around 95 range or 90 whenever the reserve list was the exact date you know that's exactly that's exactly what was needed to stop the bleeding and to return confidence to the marketplace. It was never done before. Nobody had ever created that before, but Wizards did it and they executed it and it worked. And they put a, a net, a safety net, they put a floor in the market that the game was able to rebuild and move forward with. And here we are in 2021, a lot of people don't understand that. And a lot of people just want to be very re-pitchfork and, you know, you know, bang the keyboard and put their helmet on and tinfoil hat. But the reality is the reserve list it was, is an incredibly historical, important document that really came through in the ultimate time of need. And yes, Carnival of Souls on the reserve list is kind of stupid. <laughs> it's dumb. Do we need a reserve list today? Do we need Carnival of Souls on the reserve list? Well, those are very different arguments. You know, does Carnival of Souls matter? No, not really. Does anybody care about this card? I do, because now I have a position, you know. But it, that's, that's the component of this stuff, is that it's very difficult for a normal, newer, younger player to understand the actual moment of going through an event that was as dramatic as what happened to create the reserve list. And that's something that's never talked about, and it's so rare. And as the old fogies like me get older and the previous generation moves forward, it's important to have this stuff discussed and logged in videos for the internet for the future. And unfortunately, just like children playing the telephone game, as time goes on, stories twist. Details are forgotten. And the internet tends to create its own version of history. And that's kind of one of the things that I feel is, is still extremely, extremely important to understand that, you know, what is talked about and the attitude about Carnival of Souls or the Reserve List today is, is nothing compared to why these things, why the moves on the chessboard were made in the formation they were chosen so that we could all be here today and enjoying magic and enjoying certain things. And, you know, I'd be willing to go, in, to go as far as saying, you know, there was a very real chance that, you know, if the reserve list never was created, I don't know how the future would have unfolded with magic. I don't know if it would have collapsed the game. That's a pretty bold statement. But it would have continuously negatively impacted the game, which leads to so many other variables. It's impossible to understand where that would have made a new future. And that's my speech on this stuff. When I see a card like Carnival of Souls and I make a transaction like this with this gentleman, 
you know, I'm always honored and appreciated to do deals like this, to have it and, you know, be trusted with the cards, this and that. But more importantly, a stupid card like Carnival of Souls reminds us of an era of why is a dumb card on the reserve list? Because it's important. It's symbolic. And it, it's a, like, for example, let me, let me put it this way before I end the video, everybody. If Carnival of Souls was not reserve list, I would not have purchased this batch of cards. I would not have bought it. If Carnival of Souls was not reserve list, I guarantee you the seller of, who sold me these cards would never have purchased them. So now you, you can keep going backwards. And then other people are going to sit in the comments section and say, well, yeah, that's good. That means the evil investor who's selling you this Rudy originally would have never targeted the card. And Carnival of Souls is worthless. So it should be three cents, not $30. That would be the counterpoint. And that would be the very anti-capitalistic money secondary market perspective. And at the end of the day, it is very important that all parties coexist. Whether you love or hate each other, it's very important that you get along, you're respectful, and you like all sides of the equation. I don't care how you feel or what side or this or that, it doesn't matter. You have to have the players to make the investors successful. The investors need to have the players for the cards in the economy to function. The stores need to have the demand for the product and the, the value of the product must be maintained and drift upwards for the stores to stay solvent and continue to march forward with new releases and distribution. Everybody is required, not optional, everybody is required to get along. And this is a very symbolic conversation because you can apply it with anything. You can apply it with a restaurant, the cooks and the servers and the bartenders, the host and hostesses, the bussers, the managers, the owners, franchise, corporate, everybody. The same principle applies to all categories of life, even all the way down to, you know, creepy Rudy high school to college, anything. You need all segments to get along. Otherwise, the ecosystem does not work. Have a great day. Hope you all learned something today.